Think about this. What would you do if everything that you have worked for your whole life is suddenly taken away from you in an instant? Today, I want to tell you one of the most extreme stories of success and failure I have ever seen. I love boxing. And this is Michael Bent. Ever since he was a child, Michael's entire life revolved around boxing. By the 1980s, he was one of the most successful amateur boxers in the world. So when the time came for him to go pro, expectations, as you can imagine, were super high. He was knocked out on the first round of his first professional fight. This was a huge public humiliation that left him doubting if boxing was his destiny and even contemplating suicide. But Michael rallied, and four years later, he came back to win in an incredible upset and become the heavyweight champion of the world. He had finally fulfilled his destiny. But just one year later, he would encounter failure again, losing his title in a fight that left him in a coma and with a permanent brain injury. This also meant that it had to be the last fight of his life. I also suffered my own knockout. For many years, I worked very hard to achieve what I thought was my vision of success. In my 20s, I was president of my class in college. I got an MBA from a top 10 university. I worked in five different cities in four countries. In my 30s, I became an entrepreneur. I started two businesses, sold the first one, and received lots of professional acclaim. I also got married and had two beautiful children. I mean, honestly, any way you looked at it, my life looked great. But you know, things are not always what they seem. In the months leading to my 40th birthday, I remember being home late on a Saturday night, working as I usually did, and my wife, who is here, and who knows me better than anyone, walked up to me and asked me a simple but devastating question. She said also, why do you hate your life? You know, growing up is a funny thing. With or without reason, it makes people measure their lives or count their chips, so to speak. And my wife's question made me realize that I was indeed not happy with where I was or with what I was doing. After all the work I put into it, my business was definitely not where I wanted it to be. And worst of all, I was not paying enough attention to myself or my family. What I didn't tell you before is that Michael Bent never even wanted to be a boxer. He was forced into it by his father, who beat him with a TV antenna every time he wanted to quit. Understanding this made me ask myself, if I had fulfilled my destiny, then why was I not fulfilled? So I started looking for answers. And you know, for many of us, destiny is defined by the results of an aptitude test in high school, or even worse, by the expectations of our families. We are born into rules and beliefs that, if not questioned, define our very lives. So, I had to ask myself, how was I complicit in creating the situations that I didn't like? Why was I living this way? Cicero, the Roman philosopher, says that there are two possibilities. Either you are in full control of your destiny, of your life, or you have no control over your life at all. And honestly, that was very confusing. So, it wasn't very helpful either. So I turned to the dictionary. And the dictionary definition of destiny is the hidden supreme power believed to be in control of everything that will happen in the future. Now, I couldn't agree with this definition either. I always thought I was in control and that I had the power to act. So the only possible explanation was that I was chasing after the wrong destiny. Why was I living compulsively? Why was I living reactively and not even aware of it? Like many people, I had beliefs that were preventing me from taking action and building the life I wanted. 
These beliefs are called cognitive biases, and they are systematic errors in thinking that affect our decisions and our judgment. We basically develop them to make sense of a crazy world. And then over time, we just forget that they're there. But they're there, working hard in the background, preventing us from seeing the truth. After some soul searching and research, I realized that there were three main cognitive biases holding me back. And you may relate to some of these. The first one is fear. And now, I am not saying all fear is bad. Fear is nature's way of helping us not die. We are human. We are programmed to feel fear. But think about it. Most of what we fear nowadays has nothing to do with life or death. So what was I afraid of? Well, I was afraid of failure, definitely. I was afraid of disappointing my family. But worst of all, I was afraid of what other people might, might think. Brazilian writer Paulo Coelho says that the only thing that makes dreams impossible to achieve is the fear of failure. And I was letting my fears kill my dreams. Next came something called the streetlight effect. And this is a tendency that we have to search for answers where light is already shining. This ignoring the fact that the truth is often found in darkness. My identity as an entrepreneur had become a gilded cage. It was pushing me back into my comfort zone, reinforcing my belief in my own limitations. I was trying to solve all the wrong problems. I was asking all the wrong questions. And the harder I tried, the less satisfied I became. And finally, there was something called the self-enhancing self transmission bias. And this is a tendency that most people have to maximize their achievements and minimize their failures in order to seem more accomplished. And this is very common. Most of us do it. But it has a dark side. It blinds us from seeing the truth. I was latching on to some positive indicators that made me feel good, instead of asking the tough questions. This made it very hard for me to understand that I wanted to change and that I needed to take action. Fundamentally, if we are not honest with where we have been, it is very hard for us to define where we should be today and even imagine where we want to go. So what does this all mean? Like I said, I love boxing. And betting is a big part of the sport. So when Michael Bent was beat into a coma, he was forced to bet against his self-limiting destiny. And what did he do? He went on to become a writer and an actor in movies with Tom Cruise and Will Smith. And me, well, I decided to look at what the world's best gamblers did. And I realized that the most successful ones had a fixed set of rules that they followed religiously in order to help them win. So I decided to adapt my own set of rules to allow me and break free from my own biases. And these are my three rules for always beating destiny. Rule number one, you have to know when to hold your hand and know when to fold it. This means you have to embrace change. Progress is impossible without change. You have to be willing to pivot, like they say in boxing. Stay on your toes and go for what you want. After my wife's question, I started looking at my business with a wider lens. And I launched two new divisions that are well underway to becoming the future of the company. But most importantly, I faced my fear of what other people might think. And I launched a podcast in which I interview the brightest minds I can find to get the tricks and the tactics that help them be so successful. And lo and behold, the thing that I have found is that they are all extremely comfortable with change. Rule number two is you have to know when to walk away and know when to run. Michelangelo, the creator of the David, says that the, inside every block of stone there is a statue waiting to be revealed and it is the task of the sculptor to set it free. Now, we are the sculptors of our own lives. So take your hammer and start chipping away. Be critical, be brutally honest, and discard anything that doesn't make you happy or help you grow. For me, this was very painful, but it meant stepping away from long-standing relationships that were pulling me down instead of lifting me up. The thing is this, the more aggressively you edit, the more time, 
energy, and heart, you will free up to make way for new things. And last but not least, the most important rule of all, never count your money while you're sitting at the table. Author Dan Gilbert says that humans are a working progress that constantly think that they're done. And I was measuring my life as if it were over. This is just wrong, it's stupid, and now I know it. I mean, you can delude yourself into thinking that everything you've done is a great success, but it goes both ways. And you can end up concluding that you're a complete failure. When honestly, you probably won't figure it out in this lifetime. So the key is this, stop, ask yourself, whose vision of my life am I living? Identify and discard the ideas and the beliefs that are holding you back and decide what's it gonna take for you to be happy starting today. Once you do all this, if you still believe in destiny, you'll be able to see that you already have the power to be the champion of your own future. Thank you.